welcome to C-Sharp Step-by-Step. -step. In this lesson, we'll install the tools you need to write, compile, and run C-Sharp programs. So the first thing we want to do is just open our web browser and type Visual Studio. And we'll see here that there's a download button. And if not, you can find the downloads link down below. Click that and we'll go to the downloads page. You want the free community edition. So once it's done, you can click the show in folder button to see where that installer is. Then we'll go ahead and close this browser window and double click this to run the installer. And yes, and we'll wait a second. And when this runs the first time, it may require you to sign in. So we'll hit continue, but actually first it's gonna download a bunch of stuff. So you'll probably wanna go ahead and take a break while you're waiting for this to download, depending on the speed of your internet. Once that part of the download is done, you'll see this screen. There are a bunch of things you can pick here, and we are going to choose .NET Desktop Development. You can see that there are other options, and as you select those options, you'll see that this total space required increases. So if I pick this one, you can see the total space went up to 17 gigabytes. And you can click and install any of these things you want, depending on what you think you might be interested in one day, but you can always add them later. All we need is the .NET desktop development. So I'm gonna uncheck this and then go ahead and click install. And once I do that, it's going to start downloading a whole bunch of stuff and that's gonna take a while. So once that download's finally finished, I will have to sign in. You can probably click skip this for now and it'd work, but it's probably gonna keep bugging you to sign in. So once that's finally done, it will take a minute to load everything. Waiting for that and just wait, 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 almost done waiting. And now it gives you this setup thing. You can pick what type of development settings you want. We will be using Visual C Sharp the most, but I always leave mine set to the general setting. So if you wanna follow along with my example videos, you may wanna leave it there. And then I'll just click start. And then we have this screen that opens up. And so this is the screen that we'll see when we launch from now on. But I'm gonna go ahead and quit and start from the beginning. Okay, so now that you have Visual Studio installed, the next step is to create a program. And to do that, we're gonna go down to the Start menu here. And it should show Visual Studio here in your recommended list because you just installed it. But if not, you can just search for Visual Studio and it'll find it here and that launch screen will come up and it gives you a bunch of different options. It shows recent projects over here and it shows you the ability to create new projects in different ways. We're gonna select create a new project here at the bottom and it will give you a bunch of different options. And for our purposes today, we're gonna to choose console app. Console app is a way to just run programs that primarily input and output text. Later on, we'll be doing some more visual apps using uh, Windows Forms and WPF. But for today, we're gonna do just a plain console app. Click Next, and we can name our project whatever we want. I'm gonna call this my first program. And here, this is the name of the project. This is the directory or location on your computer where the project folder is gonna be stored. This is the name of the solution, so Visual Studio wraps projects up inside of solutions because a solution can hold multiple projects. Sometimes projects interact with each other. But in our case, we just have one project. They're named the same thing and that's okay. So we'll click next. Now the .NET framework is the underlying set of code that Microsoft provides for us to interact with and allows us to do a lot of things without having to write all the code ourselves. And there are two versions that Visual Studio 2022 comes with, version six and version seven. We're just gonna stick with version six and click create. And it's slowly building our project. And once this is finished, it will open our solution, which contains our project, which contains our files. And in this case, we have one file, 
program.cs. The .cs extension tells us that this is a C sharp program or a C sharp source code file. And within that source code file, we have a list of instructions or procedures for our program to use. So a computer program is just a list of instructions or procedures that a computer will execute one after the other. It will always follow the same set of instructions, although some instructions can allow it to make different choices. In this case, we have one instruction, line two, which tells the program to write this string or this list of characters to the console. Line one is a comment. You can see it's written in green and it is prefixed by these two forward slashes. Anytime we have forward slashes, it's a comment. Any other blank lines or extra spaces we refer to as white space and they do not affect the program at all. The computer ignores it. So just to test that this is working okay, you can see there's this green arrow here that's filled in and a green arrow that's not filled in. These are two different ways to run our program. And today we're just going to use the empty arrow. So we click that and you can see a console window appears with the output of our program followed by a message saying our program ended with exit code zero. Exit code zero just means everything was okay. And then we can press any key to close that window. So if we change the output here, we can say, hello world, I love this program so much. And then we run that again. We can see that our output has changed to reflect our new message. Okay. Now again, these messages happen one after the other. So if we copy that and paste it, we can execute that program that's got two output messages. And we can change the second output messages to say most of the time. And you can see that that changes in the output. Now, if you're wondering what this other button does, this is the debugger mode for running. And that allows us to do a couple of neat things. So if I run it without doing anything else, it just seems to take a little bit longer. It has a bigger output message at the end. So one of the things we can do with the debugger though, is we can use what are called breakpoints to help us understand what's happening in our code. So to make this more obvious, I'm gonna add a couple more lines of code here. And let's add a line, this is line three. And I'm going to add, and we'll just copy and paste that a couple times. like that, and we'll just add some spacing here. Now, what we can do is we can go over here to the margin, and over here, some people call this the gutter. In the gutter, you can see these little gray circles appear when I hover over it, and if I click, say right here, this adds what's called a breakpoint. And when I run the program normally, that doesn't do anything. But if I run the program with the debugger, then what will happen is the program will run until it gets to this line, and then it will pause. And you can see this line has now been highlighted. And if I show my console, I can see that the first two lines have executed, but then the program has stopped here to pause. And down here in the, or up here in the debugger controls, I have a bunch of different buttons that let me interact with the program while it's running, and a bunch of different tools that tell me things about the program in different places. So, this button, the step over button, means to execute the current line and go to the next one. So if I click that, you can see it goes down to the next line. And if I look at my console again, you can see that line three has printed. And then if I skip over that line, it will have executed that next statement. And so I can use this tool to go step by step through a program to see exactly what it's doing. And then once I reach the end, the debugger exits and says the program is completed. So I can use the debugger tool with breakpoints to step through a program step by step to find out exactly what's happening. So to remove a breakpoint, just click on it again and it disappears. Okay. All right. So now this type of programming is called procedural programming. It's a whole list of procedures that execute one after the other. 
this class is Intro to Object Oriented Programming, and we are going to learn how to use objects or in our programs. Objects are a way to group specific sets of instructions and properties and methods into containers that we call objects, which represent usually real world constructs. So for example, we might have a car object and maybe we can tell the car to drive or we can ask the car how many doors does it have or what is its gas mileage. It's a way to group the program into meaningful units of information. And to start out, what we're going to do is we're going to delete this file that it created for us. And then we are going to just go up here to our project and we're going to right click and we're going to say add new item. And when you first see this new item screen, it will probably look like this and it'll just say, what do you want to call your new item? But we want to add a specific type of item. So we're going to show all the templates and there are a bunch of different things we could add, but we want to add a class. We want to make sure this is a C sharp class and that should be the default. And down here we can give that class a name and we'll just call it my main class. Click add. Hey, and then you should see something like this. And so here we're at the top. Visual Studio has said here are a bunch of libraries that most programs use. And so you'll probably want to be able to use these. I'm going to get rid of these for a minute just to demonstrate why we have those. Classes are wrapped within a namespace. This helps to group classes together so we could have a whole bunch of different classes because you might imagine as a program interacts with more and more levels of complexity or with other programs, sometimes people might name their classes the same thing. And so one way to tell them apart is to group them within a namespace. So the full name of this class isn't my main class, it's my first program dot my main class because my first program is the name of our namespace. And when we're within our namespace, as you can see with these curly braces, we can skip putting the my main my first program prefix in front of the class. It just assumes everything we're using is inside of that namespace. It's sort of like if you have two friends named John and one of them lives in your dorm. And if you're in your dorm and you just say John, then everybody knows who you're talking to. But if you're trying to refer to somebody who is not in your dorm, you might have to use their full name, John Smith or John Jones. And so that's how namespaces basically work. There's an assumption that if I'm within these braces, if I'm referring to this name, it's the one that belongs to this namespace. Okay, so now that we have a class, one of the things that's different is we can't just have a bunch of program statements execute. We have to group those statements within what are called methods. A method, or sometimes people will call them functions, a method is the thing that contains our set of instructions. It's an executable block of code. And so now there's a special method that we have to use. Every program has to have this one special method and it's got a kind of a weird name. And so it's static void main and the main has to be capitalized. And then we put curly braces here. So we'll talk more about what static means, but it's basically a way to attach the method to the class so that Visual Studio can find it and run it first. This is the very first method or block of code that will run in our program. And it's called main with a capital M. And then void means that our method does not return anything. Within this block of code, and you'll notice every block is offset again by these curly braces. So our namespace, everything in these curly braces is part of our namespace. Everything within these curly braces is part of our class. Everything within these curly braces is part of our main method. And so here you can say system console and it tries to auto complete for us. So we'll just hit tab to fill that in. I'm running in a class now. Okay, so we have this statement and when we execute this code, everything works just like it did before it outputs that code. So you may be wondering why go through all this trouble to have this same result. And the reason is for very simple programs, we probably wouldn't. 
But for more complicated programs, having one big file or even a couple of big files where it's just a huge list of instructions can get very unwieldy and very difficult to add new features to or to add, uh, figure out what why things aren't working. And so having classes allows us to break our program up into smaller chunks that are more manageable. Right? And so this is our structure that we're going to be using for our basic programs. We have this statement within a method, within a class, within a namespace. All right, so one thing we can do to make this a little bit simpler is we can take advantage of namespaces a little bit better. So remember we said that every class in a C-sharp program is contained within a namespace. In this case, we're using the console class. Now notice the, if you are able to distinguish these colors, the right line and main are both by default this kind of yellow color. And that means that these are both methods. This kind of teal blue, my main class and console, tell us that both of these are classes. System and my first program are both namespaces. The console class lives in the system namespace. It's like my main class lives in the my first program namespace. So one of the things we can do with our program is up here, we can add the line using system. And what that does is says, hey, anytime that we type a class name, it's either going to be in our own namespace or in the system namespace. So you can think of this as, as imagining if we go back to that roommate scenario where you have a roommate named John, but maybe your one of your roommates has a boyfriend named Sally. And so every time you talk about Sally, even though she doesn't live in your namespace, everybody knows who you're talking about because normally when you talk about Sally, you're talking about the people who live here. So in our case, when we say console, the, what the program will do is we can delete this. And when we type console, it will first look in our own namespace, and then it will look in the system namespace to see if it can find it. And if it can't find it anywhere, then it will give us what's called a syntax error. So for example, maybe I spell console incorrectly. It will say, okay, I've looked in my main, in my first program. I don't see anything named console there. I looked in the system namespace. I didn't see anything named console there. And so it gives us this red squiggly line, just like uh, Microsoft Word would indicate a spelling error. These are called syntax errors. You've typed something incorrectly. And if you hover over that red squiggly line, it will tell you exactly what's wrong. It can't find the name console anywhere that it's looked. So we can just fix that, and then the error goes away. Okay. Now, one thing you'll note about Visual Studio is that if I put this back, this if I put this error back here, is that it will often suggest different fixes. If I say show potential fixes, a lot of times these fixes don't actually fix anything. It comes up with all these ideas about how it could help you to fix this error, but most of the time these errors are incorrect or these suggestions are incorrect. One out of this list of seven is actually going to help the problem. It says, hey, maybe you just spelled this wrong. Did you actually mean to write console? And if I click this, then it fixes it for me. But you have to know a lot about C-sharp programming to take advantage of that list of suggestions because, again, most of them are not going to be helpful and will make your program worse. So just be aware of that. Now, we've been using Visual Studio to both write and run the code, but we can actually compile the code with a tool that's installed alongside Visual Studio and then run it independently, just like any other program you'd install on your computer. So let's take a look at how to do that. So if we get down to the Start menu and we look at All Apps, we scroll down here to Visual Studio 2022, and we click that, you'll see there's a bunch of stuff in this folder. Okay? And what we're going to want to do is do this developer command prompt. So if I click this, I get this terminal window, this command prompt window, which tells me I'm sitting in a certain folder and I can type a command. Now the command we would use most often here to do a command line compilation is the CSC command. And if I just type that and press enter, it'll tell me that it didn't find any source files. I've executed the compiler. So 
kind of behind the scenes, when we click these green buttons, what's actually happening is Visual Studio takes our source code, which is written in what we call a high level language, and it gives it to a compiler program. And the compiler program's job is to take that high level language and compile it or translate it into what's called machine code. Machine code is just basically a bunch of ones and zeros that the computer can understand and know how to operate with. While we normally are just going to use Visual Studio and hit these green buttons, you can use a terminal, use this command prompt, and instead manually compile things using the CSC command. However, to do that, we first have to be in the directory or in the folder where our program lives. So to do that, we're going to type cd space backslash. And this takes us to our root here. And we can type dir to see where we are. And we can see there are a bunch of different folders or directories. So folders and directories are synonymous. Uh, the command prompt refers to them as directories. So a lot of the commands use that term. For example, cd means change directory. And dir means give me a list of director of things in this directory. And we can see there's a user directory. So I'm going to change directory to users. And then look, and there's my directory. So I'm going to change to that directory. And then look again, and I can see all of these different things listed here. And I'm going to go to the source directory. And there's one called repos. So I'm going to change to that. Notice the capitalization here matters. And then I'll look here and I can see a bunch of programs that I've created. And this one is the my first program solution. So I'm going to go to that directory and look. And there's the my first program project. So I'm going to go to that directory and look. And there finally is my class file. And so now if I type csc my main class.cs, it will compile that for me. And now if I type directory, I can see I have this exe file, which is an executable. So I can type my main class.exe and it will run my program all on its own without Visual Studio. Okay. However, as you can see, this is kind of a big pain to first of all navigate to that directory. So one thing you can do as a little shortcut is if you select your project and right click down here, there's a button that says open in terminal. So if I select that, then down here at the very bottom of the window, it opens a command prompt within Visual Studio. And that command prompt is right is already set right to the correct directory. And so then I can type CSC my first class .cs, and then it will give me an error because I typed the name wrong. So make sure you don't write my first class because it's my main class. CSC my main class.cs and it will compile that for me. And then if I look, there's my main class again. Now, one thing to note here is if I try to just run my main class from within Visual Studio, Visual Studio is actually using a different type of terminal than the one we were using before. It's using something called PowerShell. And if I run this, it'll give me this big ugly error that says, hey, by default, uh, it's not since it's sitting in the current location for security reasons, we don't let you run programs that are just sitting in your same directory unless you type dot slash. And there's a good reason for that, which we won't talk about. But if we type dot slash my main class dot exe, then our program will run. So just know that there's a difference there. Now, if you were to do dot slash my main class.exe, when we do our slash the correct direction, dot slash from the regular terminal, you'll see that works too. So if you don't want to try to remember uh, to which one uses which, you can just always use the dot slash at the beginning. And if you're on a Mac or a Linux computer, you're used to having to do that if you run commands in the terminal. So again, this is just another way to compile and run our code. It has some advantages, but the biggest disadvantage is that we can't use the debugger when we do that. And so it's not really a great uh, method. And most of the time, we're just going to use Visual Studio to run our code. 
So if we want to close that terminal, we can just click that X button there and then click this little pin to drop that window down. Now you'll notice we now have our executable file sitting in our project folder. And if we want to get rid of that, we can just right click and select delete and say, okay. That wraps up today's lesson. Tune in next time and don't forget to like and subscribe.